emotions in our hearts Shed what I in our boss The spirit and the flesh The emotions that arrest The cerebral will contest Propelling the unrest Creatures and bandits With means on the hand The teachers pedantic And lack understanding So sweep out the sand With the broom in your hand Stand up Make we born Babylon Guess I can give the world to you The world to you But the falling of the curtain Is for certain Be careful where you lurking Demons searching The spirit and the women fight the battle within Cause I can give the world to ya The world to ya But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you're lurking Demons searching The spirit and the women fight the battle within With the semblance of a blaze With gratitude and rage We touch another page With delirious delight Impervious to light This vitality and might Encourages the flight Creatures and bandits With means on the hand And the teachers pedantic And lack understanding So sweep out the sand With the broom in your hand Stand up Make we born Babylon Guess I can get the world to you The world to you But the falling of the curtain Is for certain Be careful where you lurk In demons search the spirit and the women fight the battle within Guess I can give the world to you The world to you But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you're lurking Demons searching The spirit and the women fight the battle within The spirit and the women fight the battle within Cause I can give the world to you, the world to you But the falling of the curtain is for certain Be careful where you're lurking, demons searching The spirit and the women fight the battle within Vicinity no pretty, calamity if it hit me any moment, what's a pity? Tomorrow never certain, what was behind the curtain? The face of evil smirking, with that shifty eyes averting It's not a steady bubble, but either pop or topple Many will fall and stumble, let the dozers gather rubble From me later Colorado, Guinea to Burkina Faso Cannons could reach the towers and the troops will storm the castle He, I say, run, run, come, make we get it because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated So run, run, come, make me get it Calling all your daughters and your sons, we can't forget it I say, run, run, come, make me get it Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated Lord, run, run, come, make me get it Calling all your daughters and your sons, we can't forget it With the rubble steady rising and hearts are compromising Conditions here are stifling, making evil appetizing The fists are steady forming and Tenance is falling, defenses are withdrawing, possibilities are falling. In these your circumstances, evil will make advances. Pick up your sword and lances, and be sure to take your stances. Victory is never promised. The battle is upon us. Gather the brave and honest, and the righteous in your corners. Go. Run, 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 make we get in. Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated. So run, run, come, make we get in. Calling all your daughters and your sons, we can't be getting. I say, run, run, come, make we get in Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated, Lord Run, come, come, make we get in Only not your tatas and your sons, we can't forget it Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated. 
get it. So run, run, come if we get it. Calling out your data, and just once we come, we get it. I say, run, run, come if we get it. Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated, Lord. Run, come, come, make we get it. Only no your data, and just once we come, we get it. Run for the hills, let the will lead the mind. For living in the trail with the dark left behind. I'm mixed for the wicked, there is beauty to be whole. You feel it coming crooked from the depths of my soul. The hands of the city please the rules from the bone. The sweat of the weary brings us close to the dawn. The motion of the wheel brings the light to the mind. I sing the align, it's divine. Run, run, come, make we get it. Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated. So run, run, come, make we get it. Calling on your data, and your sons to come, we get it. I say, run, run, come, make we get it. Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated, Lord. Run, come, come, make we get it. Calling on your data, and your sons to come, we get it. Run, run, come, make we get it. Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated. So run, run, come, make we get it. Calling on your data, and your sons, we come, we get it. Run, run, come, make we get it. Because the peace that is bestowed upon the meek is overrated, love. Run, come, come, make we get it. Hey there. Hey. <laughs> Shout out to Nicer. Shout out to everyone. You know, it's an impromptu session, a real quick session. I'll be on solo TV in less than an hour. So in typing this up, uh, Dr. Polymath, I said uh, impromptu thoughts on critical thinking. Well, the first question is, can thoughts be impromptu? Can thoughts be controlled, perhaps if we're going to venture into this place of critical thinking and what it is, perhaps why we should engage in it? Well, how about thinking itself? Uh, does the phrase impromptu thoughts pose any problems? An impromptu thought, that's an interesting one. Um, aren't all thoughts impromptu? I mean, isn't that how the thought works? You. It just comes into your mind. Hence, why is there an admonishment to think then? How can we be told, go ahead and think? How can we be told, think critically, think in such and such a way, if indeed the thoughts do just appear in your mind? What is the difference then? What are we to do? Yeah, that's an interesting uh, comment, actually. So why call something critical thinking if <laughs> it's like a... Uh, I see where you're going with this. Um, thinking itself basically is is already such a su such a such a thing that happens anyways by its own uh, sort of merit. So why would you even bother putting critical in, in front of it? Does it change the definition of it? Probably not. Hmm. So that's the first reason why I hate the phrase, by the way, critical thinking. Why I find it to be indispensable, very natural and so on and so forth. I don't like the phrase critical thinking because number one, it does add to the term thinking something which is superfluous. There's almost mm. nothing you to be added to thinking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, have you ever heard of the term uh, so on and so forth? It's like, well, yeah, so on already covered it. <laughs> I do so on and so forth a lot. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so how can you be having a uh, pep Peeve uh, against critical thinking when you are also out here saying things like so on and so forth, and that's literally as you know as <laughs> if you compare the difference between critical thinking, which are these the two different words, and so on and so forth is literally <laughs> the same word uh, by di direct transliteration. Okay, I, fine. Uh, that was that was the aesthetic reason for for me not liking it. 
The other reason is that it feels preachy. And mm. this other reason has to do with the fact that isn't thinking, after all, spontaneous? Isn't all thinking impromptu, I believe, was your way of phrasing the question after I said, is the phrase impromptu thinking a problematic one? Right. So okay. we're talking about critical thinking. And the reason why I don't like the phrase, first of all, we just said, you know, adding critical to thinking is like, eh, sounds a little pop psyche to me. Like, why don't you just tell me to think? OK, then I know what that is. I know it's useful. You don't have to tell me. It's like telling me to breathe. Right. Have you heard and then, of the, and then there was the preachy aspect of it. But anyways, go ahead. You're going to have I heard of what? Have you heard of the other word uh, or rather term? It said uh, it's usually called uh, um, active li uh, listening. Oh, active listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've heard that so much times, like uh, when people, and it kind of grates, uh, grates me. I, I have a pep peeve against that word as well. Stop it's saying just, pep peeve, it's pet peeve, sir. Oh, is that your, is that your pep peeve? Me, people yeah, saying my, my words pet wrong? pet peeve is when people say <laughs> pep peeve specifically, not just words in general. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, fair enough. Uh, good luck with your problem. <laughs> now, the point here I was trying to bring out is that this this whole thing in pop culture has been going on people saying these things like active listening you know and they say it in a way that it's like wow there's a there's a difference between listening, listening and active listening and active listening right see the, the truth is and you know you were not listening before <laughs> if you're not yeah. doing active listening then you're not listening if you're not doing critical thinking then you're not thinking so the question here is then what's happening to your mind well what are you doing instead of um you know, doing these things that you're saying. So let's say uh, you have a problem. Okay, hold on a second. Would you mind acknowledging the super chat while I click the applause yep. button? What's up? What's up? Uh, big up to Volcanus. Oh, ten dollars super chat. Salute Ike and chat fam. Well done. I see what you're doing there. That's, that's not good. He should chat. not be coming for the man. He's not here to defend himself. <laughs> <laughs> he is not here to defend himself. So you were going to give a, an example of uh, perhaps something that would... Uh, how's the lighting, by the way? Seems like that window slash maybe I need more lighting from my head, from the front or what? No, your head is shiny. It's fine. Ah, so something that we do with our mind, right? And how we can admonish ourselves to do it better uh, right. without, without adding certain extra words to it, like active listening or critical thinking or whatever. So... What, and, and I think that thinking has to do with making choices or has to do with a, uh, a an active world, it, it, imagination of stuff happening, a plot, a play, characters, possibilities, outcomes, that kind of a thing. So it immediately then puts us out in an, some kind of an external environment, which it seemed like you were going to, like we, you were about to give some kind of an example, right? Okay, so let, let's uh, let's actually describe, I'll, I'll, gi I'll give the example and remind okay. you if I forget. But let's start by actually trying to break down what, what's actually happening when someone is thinking. If you're thinking, okay, what people think thinking is, right, is when they have a particular problem and then they try to find a solution. However, that doesn't count as thinking, actually. Thinking requires there to be a work done. Like if you have an equation, um, it's, it's, it's work. Thinking is a process that converts something, one energy form into another energy state. So you have to do work. Thinking is like going to the gym and going on the treadmill you're, and you're going up a hill. It's an actual process. Same as when you're doing the weights. It's work done, but in the mental space. So if you're doing something that is easy and there's no resistance, you're not thinking. Thinking requires resistance to exist and for you to also make um, headway. So there has to be a distance covered it went while there's a resistance. That's when thinking actually occurs. If there's no resistance, or distance, you need both. There isn't thinking. So you can make distances, right? But what we tend to call this is uh, you're basically, um, let's say you're, you're doing something that you know how to do very well. If it's easy to you, you're not thinking. What's happening is you, your muscle memory knows how to do these things already. The, um, it's like trying to build a road in a country that has forests. Stop. Yeah, I like what I did there. Uh... <laughs> So you're describing a situation where in the last sentence, the last phrases talked about something that is outsourced to the unconscious such that it doesn't take as much energy, right? Um, and if you know it, you're not really, it's more efficient. You're not thinking when you know it. You're not thinking when you drive down the freeway. No, you already learned how to not. drive. You're not thinking when you, right. when you, when you ride a bicycle, right? All that you, kind you of can't. stuff. No. Okay. You, sure. Sure. So now there is a real-time 
aspect to thinking is what because if you have automated recorded unconscious it's not thinking though i wouldn't even call that thinking it's just your it's accessing memories of okay. known terrain it's like you said thinking is building the road that's what thinking requires the pieces go here the steps need to go over there this is the measurement of it's that process of of uh, chattering chatting the unknown that's thinking okay everything so else is not thinking that's just accessing your memory you're just like a computer right um, if you're trying to build, if you're trying to mine for Bitcoin, the thinking process is actually the computer going and trying to uh, solve these uh, bit chains. That's the actual thinking process. Everything else is not thinking unless it's doing something that it doesn't know, already know the answer to in, a, in an abstract way. It doesn't count as thinking. Mm -hmm. We're not even thinking right now because we already know this. This is something that we've meditated and now we're expressing maybe finding fine ways to tune it, getting new ideas, but we're not thinking. Thinking is when you're sitting down in Calc 101 and then learning a whole new thing, thinking in a way that you've never thought before. That's what thinking is. It's when you're so, actually... I, 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 I see. I think the scenario is adequately described uh, such that others might sit through this as Calc 101 and think their way through. But well, what I want to do is perhaps now go to your example of bringing Calc 101. I, I, what I mean by that is the obstacle, the reality, the whatever it is that's occupying space time such that you have to think, right? What are those things? What are those places? What are those areas in which critical thinking can be, should be practiced? Because we're going to go there and we're going to go right back into the into what it is again more. But let's give the example of that admonishment when people say, Think critically. It's like when people say, listen actively, they found a problem that people are not listening. Therefore, the people are having problems in their relationships. So right. what was the problem that people saw and what were the outcomes or okay. what are the markers in real okay. in real life about, you know, okay. that, that led to the, you know, yeah, this is a symptom of not thinking. Yeah. So, okay. And yeah, so let's, let's break that down. Um, I want to address a comment quickly as well. The unspecialist says, accessing a memory is thinking. It takes mental effort to produce any thought, no matter how small. Um, yeah, it takes effort to produce something, but the effort doesn't reach a uh, critical mass. That's when it's actually thinking. You know, it has to be, and it has to be significantly uh, affecting your energy load for it to actually count as thinking. Everything is an exchange of the first law of thermodynamics, basically, uh, that governs the universe is that energy is not created or destroyed. It's just transferred from one state to another. So yeah, that is true. But there is something called an effective uh, process and it requires a critical mass. Until the effort reaches a certain level, it doesn't count as thinking. It's just background things just operating by itself. Uh, you just breathing is enough for that background process to continue. When I'm doing video editing, I don't need to think. In fact, right now, do you know what I'm doing? I'm writing a report for a client and is actually using calculus and everything. But guess what? I already know it, so I don't even need to focus on it. That's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. It's just not thinking. Thinking. So let me let me let me let me let me pause here and maybe on a necessary pause to say that the computer analogy that is being used. First of all, there's an the energy thing, and then there's a um, accessing memory, mental effort. When I say computer, there's these zeros and ones going on here, mm -hmm. ones firing, so on and so forth. Yeah, that's your uh, And I think that if you look there to try to find a shape oh this is when thinking happens i think not i think that it, it, there's definitely a phenom phenomenological a first person subject no actually you would you would that's so actually you think, an interesting okay, thing you can be able to just look from your yeah. sub objective perspective <laughs> and say, oh, can. ike is thinking now yeah but beyond this particular yes. threshold ike is just doing background stuff you know in his head yeah, yeah. Uh, you can okay. actually, uh, I mean, this is a new part of uh, neuro neuroscience, but yeah, they're doing a lot of these studies and the initial experiments show that when a person is is uh, doing an effective mental effort, there's a difference in the CG scan. Okay. The, so when you're going, the number okay. of electrons basically doing the thing are needed. You need more load of electrical impulse. Good, and that is your critical mass. Good. And as long yes. as, long as we, you've, you've shown, because we need to get yeah, it doesn't, yeah. As long as you show me that the shape of your, your critical mass model, the theory, how it works, mm. fine. Okay, I see that. I see how to be measured, so on and so forth. But then I'm looking also subjectively and saying, we know when we are doing 
just head scratching, beads, sweat of uh, bead of sweat on the head, thinking versus just walking and chewing gum, right? So yeah. in a certain sense, both of them are gradations. One, we're like, okay, we can build a model and I can show you some numbers, but also we kind of know when we're thinking versus when you're just speaking English because English has been, re- I mean, I'm not thinking right now in terms of the sentences, the structures, the flow, the grammar, how it's going to exactly. start, how that's it may so end. Mental. I mean, it wouldn't be freestyling and rhyming, but right. that's not thinking. That's a, no. But anyways, so I think now that that's well established, you are going to continue, I presume, on the path of what are the symptoms, the external symptoms that are seen out there that will cause people to say, hey, people should critically think. What is going wrong in their lives, presumably? What are, right, what are the things okay. you can see? So first, let's actually kind of describe what critical thinking is. Uh, now, I do believe it's a real phenomenon, critical thinking. Critical thinking is not, it is a little bit separate from thinking. Critical thinking is choosing to be critical about a particular thing. That's what critical thinking is. So it's actually the, the choice of what you're going to think about and which things you're going to hold um, reasonable to as- assume and things which you're going to focus more on. Like if you are a young man and you're thinking about becoming uh, married, for example, critical thinking here is looking at the numbers that affect you, the statistics on marriages, for example, and someone saying, well, not all. And then you're thinking to yourself, yeah, but too many. That's, that's, that's the beginning of critical thinking. It's actually understanding the problem to begin with and starting to address it in a very, um, in a way that makes sense, basically. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now you put, you've put some external markers out there. There is a thing that you want to be critical about. And presumably there'll be things in your life that affect your life that you may want to be critical about, right? Mm-hmm. And what is the way, what demarcates or what demarcations can we see between people whom think about things that are critical in their life, they choose to take the bull by the horns. Maybe it's their finances, maybe it's their health, maybe it's their whole well-being, good point there, their actually. relationships, so on um, and so forth. Good, good, actually, yeah, before I even answer that question, uh, I want to address the point you just made about finance, health. S- something like your health, most of us don't have conditions that um, leave us unable to help ourselves, right? Most of us don't have skin conditions that obviously require extra effort, like eczema. Mm-hmm. Uh, people, most of us don't have, you know, horrible worse conditions. Uh, I don't want to go into it in case I offend anyone. But the point is, most of us are not having extreme health conditions. So if that's the case, then most of us then can actually solve most of our health conditions because they're mostly due to diet and choices. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, if you're going to be critical about your health, you're going to start to think, okay, you know what? There's something called health. I see other people in my family or others who have suffered because of something called health. Maybe there is a part that I play into this, um, into this wheel of health that I can affect. I once told a girlfriend of mine that if you don't do everything possible within reason to circumvent, uh, like, a your, you know, choices, and then you end up getting a horrible disease in the end that's related to it. Let's say you're, you're a heavy smoker and then you, you kind of hope, you don't end up ca- catching some form of lung deficiency in the future. Probably not the most critical person there, right? Because you actually hope that you don't, but you're doing something that you know is very correlated to high lung health issues. Mm-hmm. C- being critical is accepting, yeah, your choices have an impact in the future. It might not be exact to specific things, but there's generalities that you can extrapolate and kind of get a better understanding. That's the beginning of thinking. It's, it's actually an ap- application of wisdom. That's what critical thinking really is. Applying wisdom to thinking. Okay, good. So the application of wisdom, the wisdom part is the realization that health is important, right? That mm-hmm. is a wise choice, right? To be critical about it. And then you apply wisdom. And part of which is, there's a part of it uh, which comes down to bringing or being present, bringing a lot of awareness to the situation. Because let's say you're within this realm of health, right? There is a sensory aspect that you can measure your health kind of subjectively, right? You can know I feel good, I don't feel good, right? Or in other words, how much of this thing goes into, because you've already talked about a threshold of critical mass of energy and so on and so forth. How about a threshold of 
presence. In other words, when you are sufficiently absent, then it's the same thing as outsourced to the background and no lower state of energy, and you're not thinking. But when you bring more presence to it, sense such as you're noticing the differences in your feeling when you're healthy versus not, uh, and those kinds of things, how much uh, is the presence of mind in the, in the, you know, let me go ahead and say, you know, concentration, sensory clarity, and equanimity, my whole thing there, <laughs> yeah, mastery of subjective consciousness. Thing. How much of that is also a factor, a variable, a mode of describing this thinking that we're talking about? Hmm. And within That's, this health thing, what, what do you do next? Do you pay attention to your body now? What? You know, well, my opinion here is uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, but on one hand, I, I do think it's going to give you a lot more, um, yeah, definitely more understanding of yourself and how your body works, right? There's a there's a lot to say about it actually, not just not just a little bit. However, there is also an issue. If mm -hmm. you are too present, or if you think too much about things you don't need to, you lose efficiency. And I'm thinking that's probably what Dr. Than is thinking in the chat. You do that you are gonna lose efficiency if you are thinking critically too often. Mm -hmm. Meaning even if you start to meditate and have this mastery of subjective consciousness, you lose an aspect of um efficiency because you are you are present being present okay. so we're talking because also dr thunder i saw his thing too we're talking about something more akin to about of a balance especially when you're talking about listening which is his particular thing right um when you're listening and also having to perceive right so listening is not just an on and off thing to give them give the devil its due right would you agree mm -hmm. uh with dr polymath that listening is more like okay i'm going to be perceiving a lot of stuff here but I want to be present enough such that I can grasp meaning also, right? I don't yeah. want to just float into the background and just become this observer of quantum randomness, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. That's, that's an interesting point there. Um, well, to give, uh, to give the... To give the angel, since he's a, he's a Christian man, his due, I won't call him a devil, uh, Dr. Lightning, there's, a, there's, there's an interesting point that he's making, actually. I do think that some people actually cannot deal with the with an extreme amount of um, sensory overload. If you, It's just like a computer also. If you try to make a computer process something that it's not built for, it's going to tell you, it's going to SHIT a blue screen of death on your face of the zeros and ones saying, nope, can't compute this. So actually, not everyone, and I want to say not everyone, I mean, there's a significant minority of people that can't actually listen while thinking and also be able to respond to what you're saying. Some people actually need to do one significantly more than the other. They just don't have that hardware to be able to do that effectively. Okay. So, so some people thing. can't. Yeah. Some yeah. people can, some people can't. Each one, though, still has to find their yes, optimal their point of ways. balance. You right. can't just go all the way. No. As I said, into becoming an observer of quantum randomness, you still have to be present enough to have meaning. Go ahead. Exactly. I mean, uh, when I was doing uh, studies, right? I've, you know, I never actually made a note during my whole degree, right? Throw up your ninja avatar while you're at it. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll have to do that next time. Um, I've never made a single... Yeah, I'll put the avatar next time. I've never, never made a single um, note during my whole degree. Now, I'm saying this because I'm just explaining how my brain works and processes information. I didn't make a note because the university provided PowerPoints with notes. So I thought to myself, why would I go and do extra effort of writing when the information is all there? And my handwriting is like a doctor's handwriting, you know, it's chicken scratches. So why would I go through making a note? Now, some people will say making a note helps them clarify that information better because now they're processing as they're reading the note, even when they're writing it, it makes the understanding a bit better. And you know what, maybe it does. I've never done it, so I can't say if that's the case. But I do know this. When I was listening to the lecturer, I was listening to understand, I was active listening slash thinking about everything they said and questioning it and attacking it at different angles and then reflecting with it in my own mind. And once I built that understanding, I also had the notes from the PowerPoints from them. So it made perfect sense for me to do it that way. But I know some people can't do it that way. They need to actually um, do one thing first and it, and it, they might even be more effective that way. So Okay, so we've so far we've looked at a 
a bunch of kind of hardware questions, a bunch of kind of like um, critical mass of energy, a bunch of th these things with regards to thinking and what critical thinking is. We even mentioned certain areas where, you know, wisdom can be applied vis-a-vis -vis things that are important in your life, right? Now, there's a reason though why, why somebody thinking critically um, or why, in other words, the critical thinking also involves the doing, the learning, and the continuing to do and the continuing to learn, right? Because the reason why I would say a lot of people right now are not thinking critically is because they don't want to get their butt off the gym or butt, butt off the couch to the gym, right? That's why they're not thinking critically about weight, right? It's because they don't want to actually do the work into mastering their subjective consciousness. That's why they're not thinking critically about their breathing or even their hydration or their sleep. It's not that their mind is not able to go there, but what is the, you, you get the idea, right? So how about, so, so far, I think we're firmly established that there's two sides to this critical thinking thing here. Okay, there's a capacity side, and even with your little capacity, there is a threshold you got to go past so that you know you're actively exercising critical thinking. You're bringing some presence to bear, but you can't have an infinite amount of presence, blah, 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 all that kind of balanced stuff. But then how about the emotional component to this critical yeah. thinking? Because I think that is the part that people smuggle in when they tell you critical thinking, you critical people thinking. people snuggle in <laughs> with the $5 super chats? Or? They snuggle or they smuggle in uh, with the $5 super chat saying think critically meanwhile they're you're hiding the fact and maybe that's why they add the critical part just to make it a little different because they're hiding the, hiding the fact because hiding the fact the that it is really about uh okay. a, a, a indiscipline okay right. uh an emotional hump that they got to go through another threshold you talked about a think a threshold in terms of neurons there's a threshold somewhere else okay threshold in the killing of your inner biatch that has not been crossed yet such that you're still waiting for some rock bottom to happen. But anyways, how about that threshold yeah. as to a main component on this critical thinking thing? Hey, uh, as you said, uh, there's definitely two parts to this uh, to this coin. In fact, there's many parts, but we're going to focus on two of them. One of them is actually overcoming the threshold of, of your emotion. Everyone has a emotional state that is constant in their whole life. It's the story. And, you know, you, you made it in a video called Storyville. The interesting thing about this emotional state is it's a narrative that everyone tells themselves about themselves in the world, right? So imagine you are a young black man in America. The story night narrative here will be you have to be worried about the police, right? No one tells you you need to be worried about your neighborhood, even if your neighborhood statistically is more likely to injure your, your, your body than the police. You are told the narrative, okay, be wary of the police. Be careful in this other aspect. And you know what? These are all good advices. Of course they are. However, the issue is the man starts to put a narrative and over-focus on these things which are statistically unlikely to cause them uh, the eventual um, thing that destroys them. But this is what the narrative starts telling them in their brain. So they continue and then this narrative builds up and it gets more wild and more, more developed. But they're not critical about their problems. If the young black man it wants to be critical, he needs to say, okay, what is the... What is the reality of this world? Could I get lynched statistically? No. Could they prevent me from living where I want to live if I have the money? Really? No. Is the education system suckish? Yes. So what do I do about it? Do I go and say it sucks or do I go and try to teach myself and improve my own education? Then you say that's critical. That's the beginning of critical thinking. It's attaching. It's actually the, the destruction of blame mechanics okay stop there i like the fact that we have a phrase blame mechanic shout out to falcon black TV. indeed thank you thank you thank you very much for the five pound he's out there on the other side with the rest of you weirdos thank you very much falcon black you guys go ahead and subscribe to his channel uh good interview uh at kinganda last time i saw that premier falcon so i like the fact we came to a phrase which says blame mechanics so we started out with critical thinking and we say hey 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 there's something about this phrase which i don't like number one it's adding some descriptor some kind of word whatever to thinking and that's just unnecessary what do you mean critical thinking isn't critical thinking just thinking 
And then we talked about thinking in itself, impromptu, such and such, blah, blah, blah. We put some thresholds on it in the physical space. And then we say there's an emotional space type thing. And then there's the blame mechanics, right? That this is an important part of why people do not make the decisions to look at as important aspects of their life critically, right? So what is blame mechanics or what are, or what does <laughs> blame mechanics, mechanics uh, consist in? I'm going to steal some things. Some, one of the analogies I will use is one that you created. So, and I will uh, borrow it because I am a, uh, I am a very creative person, so I'll borrow your, <laughs> your analogy. Um, blame mechanics is when we're young, as children, we are, and I hate going down to childhood, but it seems relevant. We are socialized to understand that if you do something wrong, someone is blamed and that that person is held responsible, and that's how we're taught. Unfortunately, in some cultures, even getting the answers wrong, like in African cultures, you are somehow punished for it, which is stupid because it's not about getting the answer wrong, it's about the process. How do you actually think? But that's a whole different conversation for a different day. Blame mechanics is focusing on the fact that if you do something that is in the social contract, basically of the culture you exist in, you'll, you'll be held responsible and then you'll be punished. Now, this is how things should happen at the macro scale, meaning, at the actual law, the legal system, etc., there should be someone or something that is blamed and then responsible because you have to attribute uh, whoever is going to do retribution. Mm -hmm. However, this is only really relevant or useful at the macro scale, at the whole society legal system scale. The individual should never care about blame. The individual shouldn't ever care about blame. This is why I'm going to steal your analogy. Mm -hmm. If Jeff Bezos... Uh, wife decides to uh, sleep with you and uh, doesn't tell you that she has this uncurable disease, right? <laughs> that uh, will slowly, you know, make your legs fail or whatever, weaker muscle atrophies and stuff. And you actually file a complaint, you know, a legal complaint against them, and you win, right? Now she's uh, one of the richest people in the whole world. And you win it, and she gives you a lot of money you are still responsible because you're the one who suffers from that condition now too, to do everything you can to make sure that your muscle does not atrophy and break down by doing the relevant rehab, which does exist in this particular case. So you basically mean, you're, you're saying this, like Falcon Black over here, he likes to make videos with him doing very nice clean kicks at the park. So basically, Falcon Black gets hit by a truck or he is the one that Jeff Bezos' wife seduces, and now he has this issue, and now he has to do these exercises. So regardless of the fact that Jeff Bezos' wife is to blame, and the society should find her at fault and give you $10 billion to compensate, Falcon Black still has to go to those parks in the early mornings and throw those kicks to exactly. make sure that his leg does not fall off. Exactly. Jeff Bezos' wife cannot throw the kicks no. for you. No, nope. right? nope. even if she wanted to, she couldn't. Let's say you had something even worse. When you're a child, you interacted with someone who gave you candy and then they did monkey double backflips on your other, uh, you know, the illegal entry point. <laughs> now let's, let's assume that happened to you, right? As a child. Yeah, that person is to blame or your society, to, whatever, it's, it's irrelevant at the individual level. If we can find out who did it, and the let the legal system take care of it because that's his job. That's a whole separate thing to you. You are the person would now have to deal with an entry point that was uh, temporarily um, invaded. Yeah, violated. It's <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Your entry so point, you have to fix the borders first. Mm -hmm. Make it harder for other things to enter that point. See, what happens here, the blame mechanics, the reason why uh, that term exists is that Society will tell you things which is not useful for your own healing. They'll tell you, don't blame the victim. No, there's no such, we're not blaming the victim. We're saying that the victim is the one who has to live that life. So they must do everything that they can so that such a breakage of the entry point, the borders are strong mm -hmm. enough so that it doesn't happen again in the future. That's why it's not blame. You're not blaming the, the victim in this case. We're not blaming Falcon Black for having this condition, we're saying that, hey, Falcon Black, you are the one who suffers right now. So it's your responsibility to make sure that you do the best to make sure that your body 
works the way that you want it to work. Blame mechanics is at attributing blame to things which is irrelevant to attribute blame to. Mm -hmm. So this attribution is not a thinking process. This attribution is more of a, it happens at a lower threshold to the thinking, right? Would you say? Are you there? Can you repeat that, please? So the attribution, listening. yeah. <laughs> Or, are you kidding or no? <laughs> no, I mean, you. I, I am. I I didn't listen, and also I said it as a joke because of the active listening. Okay, all right. The attribution, which seems to be a choice, a decision was made through some kind of reason, some rubric, right? That attribution of blame to, and then the blame mechanics taking place. It's not thinking, right? It occurs at a lower threshold. You would say. Yes, exactly. Now, how do we apply critical thinking uh, in a world where? most things are, have blame mechanics is that you realize yourself, you're like, okay, so what difference could I have done in that situation is not blaming the victim. It's actually saying, how do I learn from this thing that happened so that it doesn't happen again? Now that's the beginning of critical thinking. You're now beginning to think, oh, I can separate this. I don't have to blame myself. This is not an issue of blame to begin with. This is an issue of me living with my body and my soul as a person that's going to have to experience life in the next 80 or so years, you know, dependent. It's the it's a realization of and separation of the important things from the chaff. It's separating the wheat from the chaff. That's the beginning of critical thinking. How does one align oneself to have such values that the impulse, the training, the thing that you do when you're in that situation is to overcome that blame mechanics threshold and actually look upon your life as something which was critical enough, all right, or important enough for you to quote, apply wisdom, which is what we're kind of our rebranding of critical thinking to apply wisdom to it. Now, by what magical means does one have this set of values? Because now it seems like we've, uh, some people may say you're going into an ethical realm, a realm of choices. Are you saying that they ought to look at their lives this way or not? <laughs> well, it, you know, it depends on, uh, it depends on how much you, you want your life to, uh, it depends on how, yeah, it really depends on how, how you want your life to move forward. Do you want to live a life where experience is, um, by experience here, we mean like, if you enjoy it or not, right? Mm -hmm. There is a point where if, you, if you're too critical about everything, you're going to make yourself and others around you not want to be around you, even yourself, right? And that's what leads some people to nihilism and things like that, is when you apply too much critical thinking, you, you, reach a, you might reach a point where you kind of don't see a point in anything because you can kind of break down all these social systems and realize that they're all BS. Mm -hmm. So there is, a, if you talk about try, applying this, critical thinking there is a nice sweet spot i would recommend you know each person to kind of be critical of every decision that they that they do have so when they see themselves uh, reacting to something am i reacting to this out of choice or is it just my emotions reacting to it because of fear that is the beginning of this and i think that's a good place to kind of always do is uh you reanalyze yourself at the end of the day at the before you sleep and then you ask yourself, what happened today? Is there a situation that happened and it just happened without me actually processing it? And if so, why? Just beginning and make that like a cultural motif, just continuing okay. to keep doing that. So you're basically saying that there is a landscape uh, with peaks and valleys. The peaks are what you're trying to shoot for vis-a-vis -vis this, both the right amount of app critical thinking to apply and uh, and also the places in which you you apply it and so on and so forth, so so that such that you attenuate yourself towards the good. In other words, if you're going to be complaining about something, you might as well think critically about it. That kind of a thing. In other words, so you map yourself over there on that thing, and in order to be able to accurately map yourself there, you need to actually pay attention, right? And the means of paying attention, you're saying, is to whenever a decision is happening, whenever you find yourself making a choice or reacting to something as you mentioned then to pay attention to why or how to watch the process the literal what is going on right now right what is moving my hand to click this swipe there 
uh, do that, right? And that's more or less the process, right? There's a whole yeah. map here you got to watch out for, and be, yeah. and then there's a perception. Every, okay. every time, every time I make a mistake at work or anywhere, actually, I always uh, note that mistake in my head, and I try to generalize ways to prevent that mistake, like sending incorrect emails, sending, um, you know, making grammatical errors in emails, for example. Things like this, I every time I do it, I note it, then I think consciously about that mistake and I try to project not making it into the future. So I'm always catching myself out whenever I see something wrong. This is just an example of the process I, I have for for this similar sort of things. So if a person is able to do that now with this sort of emotional response, so let's say what happened when um, H&M is a clothing company, among other things, did that, uh, did this... Um, release whereby there was a two kids one black kid i think he was kenyan and there was another um Mzungu kid and they put something about monkey uh i'm a happy monkey or whatever some monkey comment on the shirt with the black kid now many black people around the world reacted you know really you know vehemently strongly uh, when they heard that the issue here is you, you you need to think to yourself okay let's be critical What's actually going on here? So feel the emotion, whatever goes in your head, but then question yourself, okay, what did I just do? Um, how, why, how did I respond? Is this the correct way to respond? Am I seeing everything or just this one particular thing? And then it will lead you into interesting places. An example is, well, hey, no one actually forced this kid to put on that shirt. This is a paid model. The parents would have had to agree with it. Now, if the parent didn't agree, now you have a case there, right? But the parent agreed, the child agreed, I'm sure. And there's nothing inherently malicious about it. And you know what? Maybe it's a good thing that we are happy being monkey. In fact, I'm, 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 I love monkeys, you know? Monkey is probably one of the animals that represent my some parts of my character well. Not just because we evolved from them, but, you know, I like monkeys. The issue here okay. is... Okay. Now the, the reason I'm, I'm saying the okay, okay, okay here is because we're gonna have to, we're gonna we're gonna continue. Okay, on, uh, we're gonna continue to develop the Ikesian thought here. But basically, it seems like summary. Critical thinking is thinking, but it has to do with applying wisdom, because you have to choose that part of your life to be critical of, right? And I think it's not just accessing of memory. There is a threshold that you have to pass, both in terms of measuring physically, in terms of neuroscience and their, the sophistication of their measuring equipment and methodologies. And, but also within, internally, there is, an action, there is a threshold that we know when we're thinking, right? When we're engrossed and um, not, as, not just necessarily engrossed, but actively trying to redraw the map actively engaged and there is presence associated with that and then there is this other side which i think is more important as a matter of fact or you know they're both equally important but there's another side to this critical thinking thing which cannot be divorced from from the main idea here which is the emotional threshold that you need to get past a certain point to overcome blame mechanics because blame mechanics is also that automated automation thing that goes on you mentioned that it may, it may be taught to us now if we look at both of these sides can they both be taught can they both be improved? And which side would you say is of more dire need of tutelage and improvement, if you will? Right? Is it on the let's teach them how to do logic and th think, or is no. it the? Okay, go ahead. No, because we have many uh, we have many engineers uh, in the world. Let's use uh, you know certain countries uh, in in the world with low economic um, viability. Well low economic, poor countries, okay? I'm trying to be politically correct. I think it's called low economically developed countries now. Uh, anyways, the point here is that there are many engineers and many, and engineers are taught to think critically about their problems. There seems to be an issue of noticing that the rest of life is an engineering problem, for example. Okay. That is what's missing. It's a link that mm -hmm. whatever I do here in engineering is what I need to do over here in, in life. I like the fact that you put it that way because there's this thing that I've uh, been pointing out. I'm 
one of my enemies is work-life ba balance because i think work-life work balance <laughs> enemies, is uh, the exact she? yeah i have many enemies oh, okay. i think work-life balance is the exact uh, thing that you're talking about but they're all Wait, concepts you, they're, they're all spirits on, uh, have you been cheating on your other pet peeve about um oh no 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 that, that i only have one pet peeve but these are enemies. Oh, they're, I see. They're, they're, I they're see. concepts. They're spirits. They're principalities and powers. Oh, okay. This, Anyways, these are the spirits that, that the Africans are always talking about. These are the and, spirits, the evil spirits, one of which is the work-life balance I concept. See. The work-life balance concept is basically saying the same, same thing you're saying. In other words, the problem is that, right, where you buy, you split up one side of your wor world from the other. In one side of your world, you have processes, means, and trial and error, and so on and so forth for getting things done. In one side of your world, there's a care for efficiency, there's a care for quality, and so on and so forth. And on the other side, it's pure chaos, right? Why do we do that? And I think it's this idea of go cubicalize your life and uh, compartmentalize it such that you think there's something over there called being a professional. And then, then there's the rest of the mm. life where I'm very unprofessional, <laughs> unskilled barbarian. Right. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. And, you know, I want to give a slight teaser for like a future Ikesian uh, thought uh, is that we're going to get down to what Africans mean by spirits, spiritual battles. You know, they have things like, you know, getting the pasta. I don't know why they like praying to food. Um, <laughs> they're getting the pasta to pray, to pray against the spirit of uh, poverty and you think it's yourself. Ah, that sounds stupid. But if you really look at it at a higher level, these spirits are real. These spirits that they're praying against are concepts of behavioral patterns that they've noticed that some families based on how they interact with each other and the kind of beliefs and cultural uh, artifacts they have, they have these spirits. The spirit is, a, is an overarching um, thing that exists. That's what a spirit is. Yeah, and one such description of the spirit is the, uh, of a spirit and such blah, 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 is the zeitgeist, right? It is literally the, the ghost of the times. Right? Yeah, I, I so, saw that video you made the other day, so. Oh yeah, the conversation with uh, Jay, Ibrahim Jay. Uh, yep, so I've definitely saw that mentioning about that. But anyway, let's go back. You, you had a question that I didn't actually answer. No, 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 no. I was saying that tutelage, which side is better for tutelage? Because we got like one, so in one minute, give us your wrapping thoughts. And also, which side of the divide is most in need of tutelage, of tr teaching, of training? On one side of the divide, we have learn the logic, learn to think, learn to go get past that threshold of the yeah. thinking. On the other side, we have the emotional threshold, learn to get past the whole thing of blame, mechanics, and so on and so forth. Okay. Which side um, is most in need of tutelage, if you will? Right. Okay. So right now, we already can train people to think critically. So that's not really the issue. Uh, but what needs to be taught is people understanding that there, there really is no difference between um, your work as a lawyer and how you critique things and conversations versus your job as a as, as a husband or wife, if your wife is saying things that don't make sense, you need to be able to tell her, yeah, that, that, that doesn't follow logic, right? You couldn't have been here at 5 p.m. if you were here this time in two different countries. There's some stuff that you kind of just need to learn about. Like there are, most problems people face can be overcome if they were critical. All these issues and crazy situations people get into, th th these are really issues of wisdom. And your time is up. Next time, overcoming blame mechanics, breaking down blame mechanics, breaking down the pathways through which you were inceptioned with this idea, how it manifests itself in real time such that you're able to overcome that hump. Next time, because I got to hop. I'm going to Solo TV 84's channel, by the way, for an interview. That's why I got to split. So sorry, Dr. K Polymath and the chat. But we wanted to elucidate the idea of critical thinking. We have done a good job of separating the thinking logic part from the emotional threshold part. And I think that this is a key thing that we need to understand when we think of this it's thing. A key thing. <laughs> it's a key thing. It's a key thing. It's a G thing. Pull it's down a key the thing. Ah, okay. Well, you're going to go back and forth now. You're going to okay. challenge me on my own territory. Your the, own the territory. Bars, Man, you're the not bars even in your that I would drop if I didn't have to leave right now. The it bars been, you mean? I would have bombed <laughs> atomically. Okay. The bar that you're talking about, the soap bar that you dropped inside the prison, and that's why the soap you bars know. that you drop inside a prison in the prison split you up like light through a prison, split you up again, then I rich you up again like the mother name was Gaff again, or the other one rolls out the dirt from the third day, coming through with the third sway, the third swing of the sword, chopping you like boards of fish, 
served on the pavement. I put you in enslavement in the slave ship, and I come through and dig a new grave, the new wave, the new sage, something like that. Man, this Nigerian be coming over here like a new wave. <laughs> Call it Corona part two, but I can't get excited can't. because I'm going to call my crew. Still, you, look at that shiny forehead, man. It's like the light reflecting like a prism. Still, I see your enthusiasm. So you, I'm going to let you go to your solo. You can't be stealing my words, man. You got to gotta steal it, man. I told you earlier I'm a thief. I already stole your analogy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, chat. Um, we enjoyed uh, this discussion. All right, then. Later. <laughs>